This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips. Aesop's Fables The Wolf and the Goat. A wolf caught sight of a goat browsing above him on the scanty herbage that grew on the top of a steep rock, and being unable to get at her, tried to induce her to come lower down. "'You are risking your life up there, madam, indeed you are,' he called out. "'Pray take my advice and come down here, where you will find plenty of better food.' The goat turned a knowing eye upon him. "'It's little you care whether I get good grass or bad,' said she. "'What you want is to eat me.' End of The Wolf and the Goat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips Aesop's Fables The Sick Stag A stag fell sick and lay in a clearing in the forest, too weak to move from the spot. When the news of his illness spread, a number of the other beasts came to inquire after his health, and they one and all nibbled a little of the grass that grew round the invalid, till at last there was not a blade within his reach. In a few days he began to mend, but was still too feeble to get up and go in search of fodder, and thus he perished miserably of hunger, owing to the thoughtlessness of his friends. End of the Sixth Stag This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips. Aesop's Fables The Ass and the Mule A certain man who had an ass and a mule loaded them both up one day and set out upon a journey. So long as the road was fairly level, the ass got on very well. But by and by they came to a place among the hills where the road was very rough and steep, and the ass was at his last gasp. So he begged the mule to relieve him of part of his load, but the mule refused. At last, from sheer weariness, the ass stumbled and fell down a steep place and was killed. The driver was in despair, but he did the best he could. He added the ass's load to the mule's and he also flayed the ass and put his skin on the top of the double load. The mule could only just manage the extra weight, and as he staggered painfully along, he said to himself, I have only got what I deserved. If I had been willing to help the ass at first, I should not now be carrying his load and his skin into the bargain. End of The Ass and the Mule This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips. Aesop's Fables, Brother and Sister A certain man had two children, a boy and a girl. And the boy was as good-looking as the girl was plain. One day, as they were playing together in their mother's chamber, they chanced upon a mirror and saw their own features for the first time. The boy saw what a handsome fellow he was and began to boast to his sister about his good looks. She, on her part, was ready to cry with vexation when she was aware of her plainness and took his remarks as an insult to herself. Running to her father, she told him of her brother's conceit and accused him of meddling with his mother's things. He laughed and kissed them both and said, my children, learn from now onwards to make a good use of the glass. You, my boy, strive to be as good as it shows you to be handsome. And you, my girl, resolve to make up for the plainness of your features by the sweetness of your disposition. End of Brother and Sister This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Mike Phillips Aesop's Fables The Heifer and the Ox A heifer went up to an ox, who was straining hard at the plow, 
and sympathized with him in a rather patronizing sort of way on the necessity of his having to work so hard. Not long afterwards, there was a festival in the village, and everyone kept holiday. But whereas the ox was turned loose into the pasture, the heifer was seized and led off to sacrifice. Ah, said the ox with a grim smile, I see now why you were allowed to have such an idle time. It was because you were always intended for the altar. End of the Heifer and the Ox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables THE KINGDOM OF THE LION When the lion reigned over the beasts of the earth, he was never cruel or tyrannical, but as gentle and just as a king ought to be. During his reign he called a general assembly of the beasts, and drew up a code of laws under which all were to live in perfect equality and harmony, the wolf and the lamb, the tiger and the stag, the leopard and the kid, the dog and the hare, all should dwell side by side in unbroken peace and friendship. The hare said, Oh, how I have longed for this day, when the weak take their place without fear by the side of the strong. End of the Kingdom of the Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Ass and His Driver An ass was being driven down a mountain road, and after jogging along for a while, sensibly enough, he suddenly quitted the track and rushed to the edge of a precipice. He was just about to leap over the edge, when his driver caught hold of his tail and did his best to pull him back. But pull as he might, he couldn't get the ass to budge from the brink. At last he gave up, crying, "'All right, then. Get to the bottom your own way. But it's the way to sudden death, as you'll find out quick enough.'" End of The Ass and His Driver This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Lion and the Hare A lion found a hare sleeping in her form, and was just going to devour her when he caught sight of a passing stag. Dropping the hare, he at once made for the bigger game, but finding, after a long chase, that he could not overtake the stag, he abandoned the attempt and came back for the hare. When he reached the spot, however, he found she was nowhere to be seen, and he had to go without his dinner. "'It serves me right,' he said. "'I should have been content with what I had got, instead of hankering after a better prize.'" End of The Lion and the Hare This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Wolves and the Dogs once upon a time the wolves said to the dogs, "'Why should we continue to be enemies any longer? You are very like us in most ways. The main difference between us is one of training only. We live a life of freedom, but you are enslaved to mankind, who beat you and put heavy collars round your necks, and compel you to keep watch over their flocks and herds for them, and, to crown all, they give you nothing but bones to eat.' Don't put up with it any longer. 
but hand over the flocks to us, and we will all live on the fat of the land and feast together. The dogs allowed themselves to be persuaded by these words, and accompanied the wolves into their den. But no sooner were they well inside than the wolves set upon them and tore them to pieces. Traitors richly deserve their fate. End of The Wolves and the Dogs This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Braun Aesop's Fables The Bull and the Calf A full-grown bull was struggling to force his huge bulk through the narrow entrance to a cow-house where his stall was, when a young calf came up and said to him, "'If you'll step aside a moment, I'll show you the way to get through.' The bull turned upon him an amused look. "'I knew that way,' said he, "'before you were born.'" End of The Bull and the Calf This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rebecca Brown at RebeccaBrownVoice.com Aesop's Fables The Trees and the Axe A woodman went into the forest and begged of the trees the favor of a handle for his axe. The principal trees at once agreed to so modest a request, and unhesitatingly gave him a young ash sapling, out of which he fashioned the handle he desired. No sooner had he done so than he set to work to fell the noblest trees in the wood. When they saw the use to which he was putting their gift, they cried, Alas, alas, we are undone, but we are ourselves to blame. The little we gave has cost us all. Had we not sacrificed the rights of the ash, we might ourselves had stood for ages. End of The Trees and the Axe This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marianne Markovic, Hungary. Aesop's Fables The Astronomer There was once an astronomer whose habit it was to go out at night and observe the stars. One night, as he was walking about outside the town gates, gazing up absorbed into the sky and not looking where he was going, he fell into a dry well. As he lay there groaning, someone passing by hurt him, and, coming to the edge of the well, looked down, and, on learning what had happened, said, if you really mean to say that you were looking so hard at the sky that you didn't even see where your feet were carrying you along the ground, it appears to me that you deserve all you've got. End of the Astronomer, read by Marian Margetich, Hungary, on March 5th, 2006, Göttingen, Germany. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rebecca Brown at RebeccaBrownVoice.com Aesop's Fables The Laborer and the Snake A laborer's little son was bitten by a snake and died of the wound. The father was beside himself with grief, and in his anger against the snake he caught up an axe and went and stood close to the snake's hole and watched for a chance of killing it. Presently the snake came out and the man aimed a blow at it, but only succeeded in cutting off the tip of its tail before it wriggled in again. He then tried to get it to come out a second time, pretending that he wished to make up for the quarrel. But the snake said, 
I can never be your friend because of my lost tail, nor you mine because of your lost child. Injuries are never forgotten in the presence of those who caused them. The End of The Laborer and the Snake This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rebecca Brown at RebeccaBrownVoice.com Aesop's Fables The Cage Bird and the Bat A singing bird was confined in a cage which hung outside a window, and had a way of singing at night when all the other birds were asleep. One night a bat came and clung to the bars of the cage, and asked the bird why she was silent by day and sang only at night. "'I have a very good reason for doing so,' said the bird. "'It was once when I was singing in the daytime "'that a fowler was attracted by my voice "'and set his nets for me and caught me. "'Since then I have never sung except by night.' "'But the bat replied, "'It is no use your doing so that now you are a prisoner. "'If only you had done so before you were caught, "'you might still have been free.' Precautions are useless after the event. End of The Cage Bird and the Bat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rebecca Brown at RebeccaBrownVoice.com Aesop's Fables The Ass and the Purchaser a man who wanted to buy an ass went to the market, and coming across a likely beast, arranged with the owner that he should be allowed to take him home on trial to see what he was like. When he reached home, he put him into his stable along with the other asses. The newcomer took a look around, and immediately went and chose a place next to the laziest and greediest beast in the stable. When the master saw this, he put a halter on him at once, and led him off, and handed him over to his owner again. The latter was a great deal surprised to see him back so soon, and said, "'Why do you mean you've had him tested already?' "'I don't want to put him through any more tests,' said the other. "'I could see what kind of beast he is from the companion he chose for himself. "'A man is known by the company he keeps.'" This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rebecca Brown at RebeccaBrownVoice.com Aesop's Fables, The Kid and the Wolf A kid strayed from the flock and was chased by a wolf. When he saw he must be caught, he turned round and said to the wolf, I know, sir, that I can't escape being eaten by you, and so... As my life is bound to be short, I pray you let it be as merry as be. Will you not play me a tune to dance to before I die? The wolf saw no objection to having some music before his dinner, so he took out his pipe and began to play, while the kid danced before him. Before many minutes were passed, the gods who guarded the flock heard the sound and came up to see what was going on. They no sooner clapped eyes on the wolf than they gave chase and drove him away. As he ran off, he turned and said to the kid, "'It's what I thoroughly deserve. My trade is the butcher's, and I had no business to turn piper to please you.'" The End of The Kid and the Wolf This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables, The Debtor and His Sow a man of Athens fell into debt and was pressed for the money by his creditor, but he had no means of paying at the time, so he begged for delay. But the creditor refused and said he must pay at once. Then the debtor fetched the sow, the only one he had, and took her to market to offer her for sale. It happened that his creditor was there too. Presently a buyer came along and asked if the sow produced good litters. Yes, said the debtor, very fine ones, and the remarkable thing is that she produces females at the Mysteries and males at the Panathenia. Festivals these were, and the Athenians always sacrificed a sow at one and a boar at the other, while at the Dionysia they sacrificed a kid. 
At that, the creditor, who was standing by, put in, Don't be surprised, sir. Why, still better, at the Dionysia, this sow has kids. End of Aesop's Fables, The Debtor and His Sow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables, The Bald Huntsman a man who had lost all his hair took to wearing a wig, and one day he went out hunting. It was blowing rather hard at the time, and he hadn't gone far before a gust of wind caught his hat and carried it off, and his wig, too, much to the amusement of the hunt. But he quite entered into the joke and said, "'Ah, oh, well, the hair that wig is made of didn't stick to the head on which it grew, so it's no wonder it won't stick to mine.'" End of Aesop's Fables The Bald Huntsman this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Herdsman and the Lost Bull A herdsman was tending his cattle when he missed a young bull, one of the finest of the herd. He went at once to look for him, but meeting with no success in his search, he made a vow that if he should discover the thief, he would sacrifice a calf to Jupiter. Continuing his search, he entered a thicket, where he presently espied a lion devouring the lost bull. Terrified with fear, he raised his hands to heaven and cried, Great Jupiter, I vowed I would sacrifice a calf to thee if I should discover the thief, but now a full-grown bull I promise thee if only I myself escape unhurt from his clutches. End of Aesop's Fables The Herdsman and the Lost Bull this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margadich, Hungary. Aesop's Fables The Mule one morning a mule, who had too much to eat and too little to do, began to think himself a very fine fellow indeed, and frisked about, saying, My father was undoubtedly a high-spirited horse, and I take after him entirely. But very soon afterwards he was put into the harness and compelled to go a very long way with a heavy load behind him. At the end of the day, exhausted by his unusual exertions, he said dejectedly to himself, "'I must have been mistaken about my father. He can only have been an ass after all.'" End of the Mule, read by Marian Margetich, Hungary, on March 8, 2006, Göttingen, Germany. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margetich, Hungary. Aesop's Fables The Hound and the Fox A hound, roaming in the forest, spied a lion and being well used to lesser game, gave chase, thinking he would make a fine quarry. Presently the lion perceived that he was being pursued, so, stopping short, he rounded on his pursuer, and gave a loud roar. The hound immediately turned tail and fled. A fox, seeing him running away, jeered at him and said, Ho, ho, there goes the coward who chased the lion, and ran away the moment he roared. End of The Hound and the Fox Read by Erin Markditch, Hungary On March 10, 2006, Göttingen, Germany This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Father and His Daughters A man had two daughters. 
one of whom he gave in marriage to a gardener, and the other to a potter. After a time he thought he would go and see how they were getting on, and first he went to the gardener's wife. He asked her how she was, and how things were going with herself and with her husband. She replied that, on the whole, they were doing very well. But, she continued, I do wish we could have some good heavy rain. The gardener wants it badly. Then he went on to the potter's wife and made the same inquiries of her. She replied that she and her husband had nothing to complain of. But, she went on, I do wish we could have some nice dry weather to dry the pottery. Her father looked at her in a, with a humorous expression on his face. You want dry weather, he said, and your sister wants rain. I was going to ask in my prayers that your wishes should be granted. But now it strikes me I had better not refer to the subject. The End of the Father and His Daughters This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Thief and the Innkeeper A thief hired a room at an inn, and stayed there some days on the lookout for something to steal. No opportunity, however, presented itself till one day, when there was a festival to be celebrated, the innkeeper appeared in a fine new coat and sat down before the door of the inn for an airing. The thief no sooner set eyes upon that coat than he longed to get possession of it. There was no business doing, so he went and took a seat by the side of the innkeeper and began talking to him. They conversed together for some time, and then the thief suddenly yawned and howled like a wolf. The innkeeper asked him in some concern what ailed him. The thief replied, I will tell you about myself, sir, but first I must beg you to take charge of my clothes for me, for I intend to leave them with you. Why I have these fits of yawning I cannot tell you. Maybe they are sent as a punishment for my misdeeds. But whatever the reason, the facts are that when I have yawned three times, I become a ravening wolf and fly at men's throats. As he finished speaking, he yawned a second time and howled again as before. The innkeeper, believing every word he said, and terrified at the prospect of being confronted with a wolf, got up hastily and started to run indoors. But the thief caught him by the coat and tried to stop him, crying, Stay, sir, stay, and take charge of my clothes, or else I shall never see them again. As he spoke, he opened his mouth and began to yawn for a third time. The innkeeper, mad with the fear of being eaten by a wolf, slipped out of his coat, which remained in the other's hands, and bolted into the inn and locked the door behind him, and the thief then quietly stole off with his spoil. The End of the Thief and the Innkeeper This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables by Aesop, Volume 8 The Pack Ass and the Wild Ass a wild ass who was wandering idly about, one day came upon a pack-ass lying at full length in a sunny spot, and thoroughly enjoying himself. Going up to him, he said, "'What a lucky beast you are! Your sleek coat shows how well you live! How I envy you!' Not long after, the wild ass saw his acquaintance again. 
but this time he was carrying a heavy load, and his driver was following behind, and beating him with a thick stick. "'Ah, my friend,' said the wild ass, "'I don't envy you any more, for I see you pay dear for your comforts. Advantages that are dearly bought are doubtful blessings.'" End of The Pack Ass and the Wild Ass This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables by Aesop, Volume 8. The Ass and His Masters. A gardener had an ass which had a very hard time of it, what with scanty food, heavy loads, and constant beating. The ass therefore begged Jupiter to take him away from the gardener and hand him over to another master. So Jupiter sent Mercury to the gardener to bid him sell the ass to a potter, which he did. But the ass was as discontented as ever, for he had to work harder than before. So he begged Jupiter for relief a second time, and Jupiter very obligingly arranged that he should be sold to a tanner. But when the ass saw what his new master's trade was, he cried in despair, why wasn't I content to serve either of my former masters, hard as I had to work and badly as I was treated? For they would have buried me decently, but now I shall come in the end to the tanning vat. Servants don't know a good master till they have served a worse. End of The Ass and His Masters